So the first fun thing I'm going to teach you about are HTTP status codes. And uh, HTTP status codes, they are the response from the server when somebody makes a request. So one of the things that the server includes in the response is a status code. So here's kind of how the web works, and you know this intuitively from just having used the web, like going to Facebook or Google.com. Uh, you're either on your phone or on a computer, and you say, hey, Google Google.com. Uh, show me the search results for this. Your request goes to the web server, and then the web server responds to your request and sends information back. And part of what the web server sends back is an HTTP status code. And uh, HTTP 200 is like the status code, everything's okay. So the web server might say, here are the results, everything's okay, HTTP 200. It might also say HTTP 404, page not found. So just to illustrate that, if we go to google.com, and I launch a new tab, and then I'm going to go to google.com forward slash something or another. And Google says 404, that's an error. That page does not exist, right? So that's the status code. We can look up all of the HTTP status codes by going and just searching for that and then looking at it on Wikipedia. And here's a list of all the different status codes. So servers could respond with any of these different status codes. The 100 group is informational. The 200 group represents success, like HTTP 200 success. The 300 group represents like something's been moved, redirection. So 301, that's my license plate. I said that by the end of this course, you'd understand what my license plate meant. You're going to understand it right now. <laughs> HTTP 301 uh, means moved permanently. And I chose that because when I met my wife, I was like, whoa, <laughs> this gal, she's really cool. I really like her. She moved me. And so for me, it represents just like how cool it was when uh, Jess came into my life. And then also, of course, it's the web and it represents my passion and love for the web. So HTTP 301, move permanently. And, uh, and then the 400 group is client error. So if you ask for a page which didn't exist, the server's going to respond, hey, we didn't find that page at, you know, uh, google.com something or another we couldn't find that page so 404 is not found there are some interesting ones down here like 451 unavailable for legal reasons if the website got shut down for legal reasons when people made requests the server might be programmed to respond http 451 we've been shut down <laughs> for legal reasons i think this would be a cool license plate for a lawyer http 451 a lawyer who specializes in technology that'd be sweet but then there's also this one, HTTP 418, which is I'm a teapot. That was an April Fool's joke. It got left in the specification. So it's one of the HTTP status codes. But if you go to google.com, you can see an Easter egg and just type in google.com forward slash uh, teapot. And it brings you to this page, which Google did program. And it gives you back the status code 418. That's an Easter egg. So an Easter egg is a little hidden piece of functionality which gets built into software, which they don't tell anybody about, but then people discover it over time and it kind of becomes known. It's like finding an Easter egg on Easter, right? Finding an egg on Easter, you find this little like, oh, cool, look what I found. It's an Easter egg. All right, you can see the status codes by going into developer tools. So in this course, we are going to use Google Chrome as the official browser of this course. So if you're an uh, Internet Edge or, God forbid, Internet Explorer <laughs> or Firefox or something else, it's best if you download Chrome and you just type in Google Chrome and you'll be given an option to download it. You could find like Google Chrome, this web browser. It's best if you use Google Chrome in this course. That way what you do will be similar to what I do. And so uh, we could come over here to this little options right there, and uh, we could choose to go into more tools and then developer tools, and it brings up developer tools. The first time you come here, this might be docked over on the right. You could change where it's docked by clicking these little dots right there and then clicking right here. And so now that brought it down to the bottom. If I go to the network tab and I request this page again, you can see the status that it gave me was 418, right? Status 418. And uh, if I went to a normal page for Google, it'd give me status 200. So you can see all the status 200s. And if I requested something that wasn't found, right, it's going to give me a 404 page not found. So that's a little bit about HTTP status codes. 
right? There's the I'm a teapot one, 418. But, you know, that shows you how the web works. So you have clients making requests to web servers, and then the web server responds to that request. And as part of the response, they send an HTTP status code. And then, you know, there's different status codes which are out there. You could Google them, 200, 404, 301, uh, you know, 418, I'm a teapot. Uh, Twitter even had a HTTP 420 for a while. <laughs> Just chill out. <laughs> that was the response to some stuff. So that's what HTTP status codes are. We've learned about Google Chrome and how that's the browser I'm going to be using in this course. We also saw where developer tools were and uh, how under the network tab inside developer tools, right, I'm here in the network tab, we can see the different status codes of a response. And then we also learned what Easter eggs are. So for me, that's one of the fun things about the web and software and programming is just knowing the ins and outs and the intricacies of how everything works and being able to find these little nuances and saying, oh, isn't that cool? And uh, you learn some really great stuff in this video along with an Easter egg. And Easter eggs are always fun. The one which is google.com forward slash teapot. So in the next video, I'm going to show you another fun thing, which I really like.